calling all creators, innovators, people who like to model make, uh, customizers. Have you ever been like me and you see things in your everyday life that you think you can incorporate into your next project? Well, if you're like me, you definitely want to see if you can incorporate that in your next project and you want to be able to maybe use that piece in order to uh, re replicate it or duplicate it. How are you going to do that? I'm going to go ahead and introduce three products from Specialty Resin and show how they can be useful to you in your next project and how you can use it so that way you can develop and create that piece that you always wanted to create. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at SRC 25, SRC 30, and SRC Castor Mold Platinum. And before we start pouring and all that, I want to go ahead and get my workspace set up. So I put it down a cardboard box, a flat cardboard box, and then get my gloves and of course the hot code machine. And to get an idea of the pieces I'm looking at that I want to duplicate, these are just pieces I have seen potential in. So with these pieces, what we're going to do is we're going to do two types of molds. First one is going to be a pour over mold, and the second one is going to be a uh, encapsulated mold. These are the two types of molds that we're going to look at. Um, we're kind of looking at how that's going to work for each of these pieces here. And with the pour over mold, it's a simple lay flat pour over. The encapsulated is more in depth where the silicone goes around the piece and then you got to cut it free. For me, I like to use pieces like plastic containers and pill containers. Now for any silicone pour, you have to figure out how much you need. And so for simple volume, it's height times width times length. And with SRC 25 and 30 cast molds, you're going to need a 10 to 1 ratio. So you got to make those calculations. And of course, you got to secure these pieces into your mold boxes. So for these cylindrical shaped mold boxes, you go volume equals pi times radius times height. And that's how you get your volume. And you do all these calculations. And here we have our pour over calculations. And next, we're going to look at our cylindrical shaped calculations and again we're going to do a pour over mold and an encapsulate mold on the left we have SRC 25 in the middle SRC 30 and on the right SRC platinum so we're going to start the pour we're going to look at 25 and 30 together since they're 10 to 1 ratio very similar the only main difference is the cure time SRC 30 on the left takes about eight hours and SRC 25 takes about 16. Both are thick, so you're gonna have to stir them in really good. And I highly recommend putting them in the gassing chamber and degassing chamber. That takes some time, so look at those bubbles popping up. And this is a speed lapse video, so uh, you can see it's gonna take up about 10 to 15 minutes. And then you begin to pour. And so here you go pouring over the pour out, and you also see pouring over the encapsulated mold in the cylindrical shaped mold boxes. For platinum, you have a one to one ratio by weight or volume, and it takes about eight hours to cure. On simplicity's sake, the one to one ratio is really easy. And to add to that, for platinum, it is really smooth to stir and to pour. The degassing is just as simple, and it takes about five minutes to actually degas completely, so that's really good. Pouring is a breeze. First with the encapsulated mold and then with the pour over mold. And once it's poured, you wait about eight hours and it's ready to be demolded. So we're gonna let this rest and wait for it to be set. All right, it's time to go ahead and demold cast mold 25. And as you can see, the pour over mold is quite easy to demold out of the box that I have for it. And it's just kind of pops out. The encapsulated mold down there in the pill box uh, a little bit more difficult. It's going to be a push and pull type of situation. You can cut your pillbox in two and, and mend it so that way it holds the silicone, but I prefer it this way because it's it's easy this way for me. <clears throat> as far as releasing the piece itself, I use the cut method with a little bit of jaggedness so that way the silicone will actually become its own locking mechanism for when you pour your resin. Demolding cast mold 30 is also very easy the pour over molds came out perfect again the push and pull method with the pill box or pill container and it takes some time with the bigger piece but it did come out pretty easy and again if you want to split that in half you sure can and then you got to mend it so that way it holds the silicone when you pour again using the cut and jagged method down the middle uh, trying to release strategically 
so that way when you pour you don't miss any of those fine details that you've worked so hard to retain with your silicone so there is cast mold 30 so moving on to cast mold platinum now look how easy it was to just pull it out of the box there for the pour over and you can see the details there and then for the cylindrical shape box it was a little bit more difficult to pull the casamol platinum I think it's just because of the size of that hand in that box um, but once you started cutting it was smooth cutting uh, again jagged edges to get that interlocking idea and plus that seam line the seam lines on each of these is just, you, you won't even see them another unique feature about casamol platinum is the clear pour and so when you're pouring the resin you can actually see where it's pouring and how it's pouring so speaking of resin, here we go. We're going to go start pouring into these molds. I'm using a Tough Cast 65 and a Color Pro from, from SRC plus some of the uh, dyes that they got. You can see those there on the website. And each of these are simple pour. You mix your color into the B side. Uh, the, the pour overs are the simplest. It's simple. Just put the, put the mold down and start to pour over into your mold. The encapsulated molds are dependent on your pour spout, so you want to definitely build a good pour spout for each of your molds that are encapsulated. But the pour over ones come out good. The encapsulated ones, you can see here, are also coming out well. And so we're gonna go ahead and look at some of the end products here and compare them side by side with the originals and uh, see how they hold up. And I think that, you know, you can see some ideas about what's going to happen to these and how I'm going to use them. And I just really love the details that these silicones are getting off of these. For a quick comparison of the pour overs, the SRC Platinum is definitely the most pliable. But the 30 also is very pliable when it's in thin layers. And it feels sturdy and will not, it'll bend and you can stretch it and it's just as, it feels almost as pliable as the Platinum and the 25 here. Um, when it's in the thin layers, but it's definitely more sturdy when you get in thicker thicker units or thicker pieces. And looking at the encapsulated molds, you could definitely see the durability or the, the softness of the molds themselves. Of course, platinum is the softest. It's the most pliable uh, on the durometer scale. It is at a 20A. And if you notice on my molds, I put the amount of resin that I use per mold. So this one has 35 grams. That's just a note for myself for the next pour, uh, for the next time I pour. You see 30 here is also uh, pliable, but it's not as pliable as the platinum or the 20A uh, short silicone. And of course the 25 is a 25 durometer. And there again, you see my numbers. I think that says six grams there. And um, yeah, you can just look at the squeeze test here. You can see the platinum and the 25 definitely pliable and they squish pretty well the 30 and the 25 together the 30 definitely you could feel it it's a difference you could definitely feel the difference and each of these will have its own task in my workflow the 30 for more hard walls 25 for more pliable pieces that i want to do and then of course platinum for the most pliable pieces that i want to make each has its strengths for example, Cas Casimo Platinum has a one-to-one -one ratio. That is a huge advantage. And it is durable and pliable. Plus the thickness of the, the Platinum is just phenomenal. It pours well. The only weakness I saw and see in the Platinum is that it does tend to react to hot glue, which is one of the mediums I use most when setting up my mold boxes and my pour spouts. And so sometimes the Platinums that I've dealt with in the past, including SRC here, they don't play well with hot glue gun material. But SRC's Platinum does actually do a lot better than most others that I've used, which is not the case with Casimol 30 or 25. There's no cure inhibition with any hot glue gun material. It's a 10 to one mixed ratio, which is easy to figure out once you get the hang of it. The only downside is that they are both very thick and that's with mixing and with pouring. The only additional downside to 25 is that it takes 16 hours to cure. And to recap, Casimo Platinum takes eight hours to cure and it's a 20A shore hardness. 
Casimo 25 is a shore hardness of 25 and takes 16. And Casimo 30 is a shore 30A hardness and takes eight hours to cure. You can find these products and many more at specialtyresin.com.